Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Data File. The British Army will begin training on the new Watchkeeper Tactical Unmanned Aerial Vehicle in May 2011, and the first equipment is due to be deployed to Afghanistan before the end of the year. The new system will progressively replace at least Hermes 450s, which was an interim service provided since 2007, and is contracted through mid-2012. According to a new briefing from Northern Sky Research, two trends are worth noting in the announcement. First, the UK MOD continues with its planned ownership of UAV assets, instead of leasing UAV capabilities, a trend which is expected to continue over time. Indeed, procurement of UAVs is already slated for the medium term, where it was reported that the MOD has outlined plans to acquire systems that could include BAE Systems Mantis, the EADS-X UAS Talaron, and General Atomic's Predator Sea Avenger to begin service around the 2015-2017 timeframe. Second, the MOD's planning in light of the planned drawdown in Afghanistan in 2014 indicates that engagement will continue, albeit at a relative distance, precisely by deploying assets that can be controlled remotely and from great distances. The announcement and the initiative are not surprising given the realities of warfighting, peacekeeping and counter-terrorism activities over the past decade. For instance, ground forces are supported with the ability to provide oversight for vulnerable convoys of land vehicles. So-called UAV overcover is becoming a standard feature not only in military convoys in Afghanistan and Iraq, but for civil agency missions as well. Over the near term, UAVs are also being touted as a likely to provide intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance for the upcoming 2012 Olympics in London. As such, UAV procurement around the globe is expected to increase at high levels in this decade. From approximately 1,000 in-service units in 2010, Active UAVs are expected to exceed 3,000 by the end of 2019. The increase in UAV signals sustained demand for satellite bandwidth, both on the commercial side and in proprietary military frequencies. More importantly, this means that business models that can target or provide both capabilities in running UAV missions will likely be highly favoured by military agencies worldwide. One example is Paradigm Services, which entered into a 15-year contract for the full X-band payload on Telesat's ANIC G1 satellite. Paradigm already provides services to the UK MOD, the US DOD and the Canadian Department of National Defence and other international armed forces and government agencies. With demand for UAV capacity set to increase at higher levels within the decade, Paradigm, as well as Telesat's risk in X-Ban, is likely to pay off handsomely in capacity leases and service provisioning to meet future MILSATCOM requirements. Thank you for watching.